So if you were looking at real estate anywhere in North Carolina in 2020, you probably know that the market was crazy. It tended to favor sellers almost the entire year. Homes were seeing multiple offers within just hours and days of being listed on the MLS, and it was just a crazy chaotic time. Well, today we're gonna fire up the crystal ball. I'm gonna take a look into the future and give you my predictions on what I think the 2021 real estate market for the state of North Carolina will bring. And if you stick around till the end, I'm gonna give you some tips if you're looking to buy or sell real estate in the next year on how I think you could best take advantage of this market. Hey, this is Jeff Valentino, local realtor. I love helping people buy and sell houses. If you wanna talk more about real estate, please feel free to reach out to me direct. You can call or text me at 336-837-5924 or you can email me at jeff at govalentino.com. I'd love to be your boots on the ground if you're thinking about buying or selling in the state of North Carolina. Okay, so 2020, we know it was busy. It really tended to favor sellers, like I said, that entire time. Here are some reasons why that was the case. First, mortgage rates were really low. Almost the entire year we saw historically low mortgage rates, which caused a lot of new buyers to come into the market, but also people looking to upgrade, maybe to move into that next move up house sooner than they would before, and so on. So the low interest rates drove a lot of action. The other thing that caused the market to favor sellers quite a bit was just a general lack of inventory. And there were quite a few reasons for that. One is you might've heard of a little pandemic or something that happened at the beginning of the year. Well, that basically shut down new construction, which caused construction costs to go up, which caused the inventory for new construction homes to shrink to almost nothing. And they still have not caught up with that. So we saw a lack of inventory from one from the new construction. There was also a lack of inventory because while I don't like to see people lose their house, the reality is is foreclosures are a thing or they're a section of inventory in the market. And with mortgage forbearance and all those other programs that were going on, we saw much, much fewer foreclosures in 2020 than previous years. So that was another lower source of inventory. For sale by owners also shrank. Also existing homes going on the market train for all the above reasons. Plus, I think sellers saw what was going on. They saw how fast homes were getting snatched up and bought and they were afraid to put their house on the market and not be able to find a new place to move to. So that caused some of them to maybe pause or do a remodeling project or wait to see what happens next year. So that was another shortage of inventory situation there. Now, that's what kind of caused some of that in 2020. So right, there's a lot of new buyers, a lot of move up buyers, historically low rates with low inventory. So when demand is high and inventory is low, it tends to be a seller's market, right? We saw prices throughout the state of North Carolina go up this past year. Uh, in areas where I specialize in, like the triad, they didn't go up quite as fast as other areas like Raleigh and Durham or Charlotte or the coast, which saw prices move up much more sharply than we did here. But again, across the whole state, we saw prices go up in general. Now let's talk about 2021. What do I think is gonna happen? While I don't really have a crystal ball, I don't know for sure, I'm gonna make some educated guesses based on my experience, but I've also talked to real estate leaders from all different parts of the state. So district directors that are on the beach in Wilmington, that are in the mountains in Asheville, that are in Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, and, and then where I specialize in the triad as well. So I've talked to these people and we came up to a similar consensus. We saw things similar throughout the entire state of what I described at the beginning part of the video. And what do we think is gonna happen for next year? What do I think is gonna happen for next year? So I would look at what is gonna change next year from last year, right? Do I see mortgage rates going up would probably be the first thing. And most economists are saying, no, they're not going to, at least for the first half of the year. As a matter of fact, they may even, some are even say they might go down to try to further stimulate the economy. Who knows if that's the case, but I know right now a consensus seems to be that there is not going to be an increase in rates. So if mortgage rates stay low where they were, that will keep that side of demand high, right? With new first time home buyers, so if mortgage rates stay low, that will keep that demand side high where we saw it before, right? More new first time home buyers, move up buyers that are looking to do it maybe quicker than they would have before and similar to what we saw last year. The other part of that is new construction. We still see new construction inventory lacking. 
It did pick up a little bit from where it was early in 2020, but it's nowhere where it needs to be. We see builders in some areas that can't keep up with demand. So they're, they're raising their prices. They're doing what they can um, to try to curb some of that demand, but they cannot keep up oftentimes. So they're offering less upgrades and things like that. So I don't think that inventory situation is gonna fix itself either. And we have not even talked about what the new administration is going to do with any of their economic stimulus plans that they have talked about. I know it's been some discussion whether there is going to be a $12,000 or $8,000 tax credit for first time home buyers and different things like that. I don't know if that it's any, any of that's going to happen. If it does, if that does go into effect, I would see where that could create a scenario where it was even more of a seller's market than last year. So long story short, and that I think it's going to be at least the first half of the year, very similar to what we saw in 2020. A lot of action going on listings in almost all price points, even in, you know, moving up into the luxury price points, which tend to take some time often. They were, we saw those move much quicker in 2020. That will probably be the same in 2021. That also means is you're gonna to have to have some strategies if you want to thrive in that market. So now I wanna just talk about a couple different things, whether you're looking to buy in 2021 or sell in 2021 throughout the state of North Carolina, here are some tips that I think will help you out if that's what you're looking to do. So first, if you're looking to buy, first is you just have to understand the reality of the market. The, the reality of the market is it's not like it used to be where you can go see a house and think about it for a day and bring the family back for another showing and, and talk you know, about numbers and stuff like that and wait another day and then make an offer on the third or fourth day that's on the market. It's just not realistic. If you like the house, you have to have your, your criteria dialed in, okay? Really have to know your have to haves and nice to haves and really get a clear understanding on that. The other thing I would say is consider expanding some of those. If you really need to be, you know, within a certain working commuting distance to work or things like that, can you stretch those a little bit to maybe get you into a new area or to see some new inventory? Is So expand those have you know those your criteria where you can and where you're comfortable not necessarily always on price but on some of those things if you absolutely had to have you know uh remodeled bathrooms in the last five years or something like that re-examine that and just see if that's a really have to have just because i anticipate inventory being low again the other thing you should do is have a local lender we see so many people moving to north carolina from out of state and i can tell you from representing sellers we get so many offers, sometimes a dozen in the first two days of a house being on the market. Sellers have their choice right now of which offer, and that includes price, terms, financing, the whole bit. Here's what I see often happens. Somebody's moving from New York, right? They have a pre-approval from a big bank, a national bank, somewhere out there in New York, and I can tell you almost all the time, that gets moved to the back of the pile, simply because Sellers understand the current market and they know they can take their pick of these offers. So one thing that puts you in a poor spot right away is not having a local lender and a local pre-approval. Now, obviously you're free to use whoever you'd like, but lenders that are local to the area that you're moving understand contracts, customs, the rules, etc., and how closings works where they might just not on a national level. So that's one thing is to have a local pre-approval and really to make sure that you have that stuff dialed in. So when you make an offer, you know, I this is how much due diligence money I can have. This is earnest money. This is my down payment. And really just have those numbers dialed in with a strong pre-approval that will move you ahead of a big chunk of offers that are already out there. The other thing I would say if you're a buyer is consider your due diligence and earnest money amounts. Now, I helped clients get offers in 2020 accepted where as the buyers, we were not the highest price, but we were able to make better offers through other different ways. One is simple one is offering more due diligence. If you're confident in the house and you know it's the one you want, then you have to do what it takes to get it sometimes in this market. And that's offering a higher due diligence fee to the seller. They understand that's real skin in the game by the buyer and they tend to take those offers much more seriously. And it's one thing that you can do to help your offer get accepted over others is to increase that due diligence amount. The other thing is to be flexible on your terms. Sometimes a seller wants a quick close. Sometimes they might want to push the close out, which we'll talk about in just a minute for sellers. 
So be flexible on your terms and really, if I'm not helping you, which I hope I am, but if I'm not helping you, really have your agent talk to the other side to see what, besides price, what are the other things that we can do to make our offer more appealing? Is it gonna be a quicker or longer closing period? Is it gonna be you know, a different inspection period or, or what do we have to do? Really have someone that's gonna be aggressive on your behalf and go in there and try to find those intangibles that can make your offer stand out from the crowd. Okay, if you're looking to sell in 2021, here's some advice for you. So here are a couple things that you can do to really maximize this market to get the most amount for your house or the quickest or whatever the case may be that you're looking for. So first thing is condition still does matter, but don't go over the top on it. With so many offers coming in on almost every house, make sure your house is presentable. Paint and carpet and decluttering are usually the best things that you can do to make a house more presentable. So I would say, do those, but don't go over the top on repairs ahead of time and stuff like that. The second thing is, if you're considering selling a house, but maybe have some concern on, am I gonna find a new place? Do what I was just suggesting for buyers earlier. Push that closing date out more. We're seeing sellers requesting, and I'm advising some of my clients to request closing dates that are 60, 90, sometimes even longer if in certain scenarios, closing dates out and buyers are going for it simply because they need a house to buy and they understand that you're going to have to have time to find your next house. So don't be afraid if you to give yourself time when looking at an offer and to counter that with more time, you know, not only for more money or change of different terms, but really think about pushing that closing date out so you have plenty of time to find your next home. Last thing would be about due diligence requests. You know, expect some of these to happen. With so much action on buyers right now, they're making offers that are very high and they're not asking for a lot. They're trying to give everything in the offer. We're seeing some people come back in the due diligence requests and that they're not getting, you know, crazy out of line because they know that ultimately it is up to the seller to accept those or not, but be willing to give just a little bit on due diligence requests to make sure you get through closing smoothly. All right, that's it. That's what I think is gonna happen in the 2021 real estate market in North Carolina. I hope that was helpful. I wanna be your boots on the ground if you're thinking about buying or selling this next year. Please reach out to me, call or text 336-837-5924 or you can email me at jeff at govalentino.com. Thanks.